in my time at Yoga High School, I was the great entertainer because I had a trio. It was me, my sister Eva Pearl, and her sis and her friend Nona Jean. If we wasn't on the shows, there was no show. <laughs> and then, so I was very known in hope for uh -huh. doing shows. And of course, if Mrs. Naomi had a play, I was going to be in it. There was one play we did called Polly Put the Kittle On and We'll All Have Tea. <laughs> and I'm Polly. I'm the maid. So I do that play. I must have played Polly pretty good because we did it three times. And the, the army, uh, we had a full house every night. Then the white school all of a sudden wants us to come to their school and do Polly, put the kettle on, and we'll all have tea. So I go to the school. Here I am, the star, but I got to go in the back door. <laughs> I cracked up laughing, but we did it. We had a full house, even in the white school. And uh -huh. I was known for Polly. <laughs> so it's just, just one little thing. All right. Now, let's talk to you about your time uh, acting, because I know you can sing. I know you're, you're, you're very talented, right? Talk about your time acting. Did, did you enjoy singing more than acting or acting more than singing? Because you well, had to do one of them both. I did both of them because, and I enjoyed both of them because I had done this thing type of thing all my life. It's nothing new for me to pretend to be somebody else. That's, to me, that's all acting is. It's just you're trying to play this character. They got me now trying, going out for a part where I play a Jamaican woman. Well. I don't speak Jamaican, but I know that the Jamaican speak English just like we do because they came from Africa just like we did, but they were put off the boat in Jamaica before we were brought to America and put off the boat. So we all had to learn a different language. We had to learn English with a Southern accent. And that's what we taught, the Southern accent. But I was, they've stopped it now. It's not as strong as it used to be. It is in Miami, uh, not Miami, but uh, Mississippi. They are pretty strong still with the Southern accent. Well, I had the Southern accent when I first came up here. But the Jamaicans, they have the accent, but it's British because Britain owned Jamaica. So the Jamaicans speak the broken English with the British, slight British accent. And they asking me, they got this part for an old woman. Well, I'm old, I'm 88. <laughs> and that's about as close as they gonna get to 90. <laughs> and they want me to try on for it, but uh, so I've been trying to get the Jamaican accents, you know, do, do that. Yes, ma'am. <laughs> So I enjoy trying, I enjoy doing things. It's fun for me. And when I do a character, I sort of, I have to be careful because I become that character. 
and I can't get the sometimes I can't get the step out of it. Taking a little while to get the step out of it, you know. But that's my way. nomination. Now, my record came out in 1962. Well, I was in New York, and I was the prodigy of a woman, hillbilly singer named Dorothy Shea. And of course, when the record got in the 20s and started going up, she put me at the village, at the, uh, the one of the nightclubs. I think it was the village vanguard. And I went there. I did the show. And when I finished, she always told me if she wasn't there with me to stay at the YWCA, I would be protected there. And of course, I was living at the YWCA. I was by myself because she had come back here. She had gotten the Waltons. Did you ever hear of a show called The Waltons? No, I don't think so. Well, that was a white show. And I think she was in it. Dorothy She became a part of that. And of course, Dr. C died in the 70s with cancer. I never saw her again after I, she took me to the village vanguard. I never saw her anymore. She got me an agent. The agent didn't know nothing about no nomination about a record. I was sold by the company that tricked me into doing the letters. They sold me to RCA Victor. Mm -hmm. All right, RCA Victor was a company that this singer, she's a white singer too, but she told me, don't, if when you start singing, don't ever go with a company called R.C. Victor. And I said, well, I remember that. And when they, all of a sudden, Dorothy takes me to New York. And the first place she takes me is to R.C.A. Victor. I said, oh, I don't think I'm supposed to be here. Uh -huh. But I do the audition. They say, you don't have a, she don't have a recording voice. I said, good, because I wouldn't have had to say I don't want to be with you no way. <laughs> you know, because uh, 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 Rosemary Clooney had told me, don't go with that company. It's one of the worst companies in the world. And it is. They will take every penny, they took every penny and sent my record all around the world. I never got a penny from them. No. I hate RCA Victor. And, and they sold my record. The next thing I know, I'm with a German company, BMW, BMG or something like that. I don't know. But RCA Victor sold my record. To, when I went to London, they had put it on an English company. It was number one. I never got a penny from them. They just knew that they sent me to us, uh, uh, sent the record to Australia. It was a big hit. It was a worldwide hit. And I got nothing. Oh. So it was just one of those things. I've seen yeah. it was a dirty company. 
and they had done Rosemary Clooney dirty. But for some reason, Rosemary Clooney eventually got some of her money. I never did it. If I may interrupt this journey, and this can be edited out, tell the story about your Grammy nomination, because you only found out a couple years ago. This is interesting. Well, this is the Grammy that they said I won. I was nominated for a Grammy. I didn't know what a Grammy was. I was never told that my song was had been nominated to receive a Grammy. Not only that, blacks didn't go to the Grammys. And when I found out about it was way back then, in 2017. That's when a fan of mine came from Boston, a white girl. And she came, she said, I called me and she said, I want to meet you. I said, well, fine, I will meet with you. And we talked and we became very close friends. She said, do you know you were nominated? I said, no, don't believe everything you are told. I said, because I was not nominated. She said, oh, yes, you were. And we had the argument about who's nominated and who got. <laughs> well, I found out I was nominated. But at that time, what they did, they put all the blacks in a category where I said, like, I, it was me as the outstanding singer of the year. That was in 63. Uh -huh. And Ella Fitzgerald was nominated as the jazz singer. Lena Horne was the only one that could go into the movies. So she was nominated as the black movie uh, person. And Diane Carroll was nominated as the Black Broadway singer. Now, we were all together there, but one award. I don't know nothing about it, and I don't think the other people knew anything about it, but when they got ready to give the award, Ella Fitzgerald was suggested to get the award. So, and I believe she deserves it. Ella Fitzgerald was a great old singer. And okay. she would do that uh, 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 scan. Ella Fitzgerald was a forgetter. What, uh, why did she start scanning? She would forget a song. And such a song was a dear friend. He, he played that horn. So Satchmo scattered too. And he taught her how to scatter, scatter. So when Ella would forget, she would just start scattering and do it and do it. Oh, that kind of stuff. And I never could get her down. I couldn't get her down. But she was a great singer. Uh huh. <laughs> But no, I didn't know nothing about any awards. I was looking at your body of work and the, and the amount of people that you were able to work with, um, especially your early, early days. I know some people kind of pronounce your name incorrectly, so I hope I don't, but Maya Angelou, um, and then just even your time on uh, The Little House of on the Perry, and then also Days of Our Lives. Do you have, I'm not trying to get you in trouble here, <laughs> Do you have a favorite person or favorite set, favorite favorite show? What was you, what is your favorite person and or show that you worked with in your in your in your time? My, I tell you, I don't have really any favorites, but the one that I just adored 
working with was a comedy man, and I did House Party 3. Yes. And I just, for some reason, and I don't know why, but me and that boy was just together. Bernie Mac. And Bernie Mac said, when we finished the show, I played his aunt in that show, oh. where I did all kind of stupid things. It wasn't in the script, but I would just do stupid things when I felt like a character needs some a little spunk. <laughs> I would just do something silly. Like on that show, we were, he was going to get married. And uh, he was taking me to his uh, girlfriend's house, and we were going to have done Well, I'm eating like a dog, and there's wine on the table. And he says, I said, we, it's something about we got to go. I'm going to take you home. home. And I picked up, <laughs> pick up the wine. Well, that wasn't in the script for me to pick up the wine, to steal the wine. But, I get it. He said, you're not supposed to do that. I said, I do what I want. 